What is up you guys? It is your boy John here from Puma Flaw. Welcome to another On The Farm. Do appreciate you guys clicking on the video. Welcome and how's it going? So guys, it is currently Memorial Day Monday for me here at the farm. Just want to take a second to say thank you. And that's all I need to say, I think. Just thank you. Really do appreciate it, everyone. Everybody. All right, so something is missing from the farm currently to make this Memorial Day what it's all about. So let's, uh, let's go take care of this real fast. Just saying. There's just one thing missing. There we go. That is so much better. America. That is much better. Now, now we can get on with our Memorial Day here at the farm. We don't actually have anything like planned or no barbecue, nothing like that. We're, we're being lame this year, but uh, just got some work to do. So I'm going to diss the garden today. Uh, I know you guys have seen that a bunch, but we're going to go do it again. Uh, it actually, our theory of disking the garden a bunch this year really has been working out in our favor because we are killing round after round after round of weed seed and that's exactly what we want to do actually let's walk out there right now we'll take a look at the garden right now let's go look at it saying it is a bit windy down here but it is definitely straw hat weather here on the farm just saying it's a little windy it's not too bad today uh yesterday it was a lot windier and we were down here yesterday too of course but as you can tell, woo, there's like no clouds. Just saying, like not a cloud. Okay, there's some little ones like way off. But for the most part, we're looking pretty good down here today. So let's look around the garden here real fast and see why we left it open this year and didn't plant any oats or rye. So as you guys can see, there's some gourds. There's a gourd right here at my foot. Um, we do have a fair bit of that going on again this year uh, which if you guys recall last year we actually left all the gourds go but we decided this year not to not to do that but the biggest reason we didn't plant any oats or rye last fall were so that we could kill this kind of stuff right here that's grass crabgrass and uh, it's gonna be awful nice that we're able to kill it all repeatedly this spring and therefore getting rid of just a ton of weed seed out of our garden um, it is very very nice to be able to do that for once um, this is our uh, our worst weed i would say we have is purslane it's that weed right there this garden will get covered in purslane if we don't take care of it um, we were thinking about spraying the garden with Roundup today, however, kind of talked Dad out of that because why use chemical when you can use the tractor and just disc it up? You know, we might as well just disc it up in my opinion. Uh, we'll get a good kill on this stuff today with the sunshine and a little bit of a breeze. So that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the only downside today to, uh, to doing this is it's a little wet out here in spots. We're walking toward a, towards a wet spot now. Um, there's the wet spot here. There's a little bit of a low spot here. And we're not sure if there was a tree buried here or maybe some hogs back in the day or something. There's something that was buried here that's settling out now over the last uh, probably three to four years. It's been settling. Uh, usually when the pumpkins are here, it, they'll just be a pretty good sized hole here that'll settle out and we'll refill it with dirt every year. But... Um, so far hasn't settled out it settles out over the summer so yeah like i said not sure what was there that uh causes it to settle out there's an old piece of a crock you never know what you're going to find out in this garden there's always random crap laying around everywhere uh this is where our barn used to be out here the uh, barn that burned down during the 1993 flood yes I said burned down during the flood of 1993 the water was up maybe five six feet or something we had five six feet of water on the farm then and there was a thunderstorm and lightning actually struck the far struck the barn lightning actually struck the barn and burned it down to the water line and it was full of bales of straw up in the hayloft and uh, the neighbors about Oh, a mile away or so said that there were bales literally exploding out of the barn because the pot the twine would pop on them and they would kind of explode they were actually floating bales that were on fire heading over towards the neighbor 
which is kind of crazy if you think about it that uh, that happened but uh, yeah let's see what other weeds we can find out here there's a bunch bunch of this purslane stuff so here you can see a bunch of purslane coming into the frame now and actually you can't even really see it because if you look down here look at all that those are all individual little plants that are coming up holy cow yeah, we definitely need to disc this today. Like I said, it's a little wet down on, in there, but it'll be just fine. It'll be just fine. And you know, it's not like we're worried about losing our moisture in the in the dirt, because a lot of people don't do spring tillage around here. Like this field behind me that was worked last fall, and it, it'll be soybeans this spring yet, and uh, they haven't touched it. A lot of people get worried about losing moisture, but we put drip irrigation on our pumpkins, so it doesn't matter to us nearly as much as it does to the farmers that you know don't have the capabilities to irrigate hundreds and hundreds of acres so oh and actually coming up here in just a second we had kind of a, we left a test plot kind of of ground that we didn't work last time because our harrow was sitting there and uh let's see how bad that was so they did not get dissed last time it got worked the time before but not last time so here we go so there's our harrow we've been storing it in the garden so that we can uh, cut the grass. You know, we don't have to worry about moving it every week to cut the grass. But there you go. Look at the purslane coming up in here. It's just ridiculous how much there is, honestly. Uh, you guys want a sweet potato update? If you watched last video, you know, man, them sweet taters. That's all purslane, too. <laughs> All covered in purslane here and grass. I'll disc this up today as well because there's nothing going to survive here. Actually, I take that back. There's one sweet potato right there. I'll ask Dad what he wants me to do. If he wants me to disc up the sweet taters or let them go, there's one plant out of, I think that was 27. 27 plants that we planted and there's one left. Pathetic. <laughs> Just pathetic. Oh, I'll show you guys the hollyhocks. They are starting to bloom. Uh, if you guys don't know the story behind the hollyhocks, they were grandma's favorite flower. One year, just randomly, because this actually used to be uh, farmed right where I'm standing, the garden. They actually planted in crops for uh, several years. And then when we took it over and put garden in here, these hollyhocks just started growing. And we've kept them going ever since. But uh, here we go. I need to spray them today with the miticide. We get mites on these pretty bad. And uh, a little bit of spray will help with that. But you can see there's a pink one there, kind of a pinky looking one. Very cool. And they bloom all the way up to the top. So by next next Sunday for me, uh, they should be blooming real good by then. But you can see they're in here pretty thick. And we really don't do much with them. We do spray them with the miticide. Uh, but that's about it. All right. Well, I think it's time to go get the old 995 out. Need to get the 995 out. Need to check my fuel. Um, I'm not sure where my fuel's at on the 995. Uh, let's check that. Oil's good. And we'll get the disc out in a little bit here. Let's go. All right, guys. Ye old 995 should be ready to go. Uh, let's check the fuel though before we get it out. If you guys are wondering, it does have a under hood mount fuel tank right up here in front of where you sit. So I can't see it because my sunglasses, and I think it is actually getting kind of low. So I'm going to get out the Grandpa patented fuel measuring device. This tractor does have a fuel gauge on it, of course, but it has not worked. I don't know. I don't ever remember it working. And apparently the part that we need, either you can't get it or it is very, very expensive. So, in our, in our handy dandy toolbox right down here is the patented, not at all, fuel measuring device that was made by my grandpa. So, in the old toolbox here, patented fuel measuring device, also known as a stick with a string on it. Now this stick is pretty dirty, so I don't want to stick it in there yet. I want to wipe it off first. All right, so the stick has been wiped. It is now clean enough to put it in the tank. Of course, this tractor does have fuel filters. 
But of course you don't want to put anything in your tank that is dirty because that's just silly. So what you do, it's very, very sophisticated here with the, with the measuring stick. Very sophisticated here, guys. Just saying. And if you don't get my humor by now, then whew. But here we go. Touch. You can hear it. Touch the bottom of the tank. Pull it out and go, oh, I only have about two and a half inches of fuel. So I think I need to... I think I need to find some fuel. <laughs> Just saying. I need to see if we have any fuel down here. We do use off-road diesel in this tractor, the red diesel. Um, we buy it at a place in town and it's a lot cheaper because you're not paying so much tax on it because you don't pay the road tax, of course. Um, and of course this tractor is, quote, for agricultural use. Therefore, we can put that diesel in it. You can't put the red diesel in your truck and run down the road that is technically illegal. But what I have here is two different cans. Each one's, uh, well this one's about half. That's a little more than that one. And uh, let's fill her up. Not fill it up. Let's put in what we have. So of course guys, it would be nice to have, you know, a fuel tank down here, but we just simply don't go through enough diesel to, to warrant it, uh, to be honest. So, yeah. I'm going to give this can a sniff before I pour it in. It should be diesel. This this is a diesel. We'll use this one for diesel. But you never know. So I'm going to crack this open and look at it first. I think it's red diesel. I think this one's red. It's hard to tell in a red can. You guys have one of these cans here that doesn't have a vent in it. Highly recommend doing this. Now, I didn't actually say I recommend it, but you know, it might be illegal. Put a valve stem in there, drill you a half inch hole. Valve stem with no core. Keep a cap in it on it though, when you're not gonna use it. You definitely need to keep a cap on it. So what you can do is you plunk know, it in your tank. You try not to spill everywhere. I don't like these old old cans, honestly, without the push button like that, that yellow one. What you do is you crack your valve stem open. You open that bad boy up, and it rips through there. Actually, guys, just to humor you, I am going to check the oil in 995. Man, Dad is loud outside. I don't check the oil in the 995 very often because it doesn't use oil. And uh, there's no drips on the ground or anything underneath it. So it's not really something you need to check all the time, but... So if you want to check the oil in the 995, it's kind of a bear to get to with this K60 front loader on it. But, it's right down there. And like I said, it is a bear to get to from time to time, right down there. I can't actually see what I'm looking at either, which is the best part. As you guys can see, it is actually, we're over full. Huh. That's interesting. I thought we'd we were good but it's actually a little over full um, it's not over full enough that it's gonna hurt anything and the hydraulic oil slash rear end oil is right down here that little thing down there you can pull that And see that that oil is just fine as well. All right, guys. So all systems are go on the tractor. Oil is good. Rear end oil slash hydraulic oil is good. Fuel is pretty good. About half tank now. So uh, what do you say we fire this bad boy up finally? Just saying. Let's do it.
All right, so disking is now done. And I'm going to put the trailer away here in a second. Got to go reset my blocks, of course, before I back the trailer in. And remember what I said about no clouds? Boy, well, how like an hour can change things, huh? Or two hours, however long it's been. What the hell? All right, so I was just walking back from the shed to the tractor over here. You can maybe can see it. And I just discovered the most random thing ever. I don't even know why this would be here, but it's here. It's so weird. That right there, this plant right here, that is a strawberry. I don't have a clue why that's here. <laughs> just a random random strawberry we used to have strawberries in the garden we got rid of those a couple years ago 